Hello everyone, how are you doing today? You are all welcome to my channel, Apostle Paul Taiwo YouTube channel, to my recent subscribers I want to say a very big thank you, and to those that have been here all along, God bless you. And if this is your first time on this channel, I want to say a very big welcome and thank you for tuning into my video today. Kindly endeavor to click the subscription button and also the notification icon so that you can be notified whenever I dropped a new video or come up for prayers. This video you are about to listen to I believe will bless your heart, and help you to come into repentance, and also strengthen your bond with God and with His Holy Spirit in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, Amen. Endeavor to like this video, share it to all your friends, contacts and loved ones, God bless you. This confession is the third part in of the five volumes, from the excerpt testimony of Brother Augusto Quila Makwengo, a former servant and dedicated son of the Lucifer. To fully benefit from it, you need to read the remaining other fifth parts in numerical order. The Road of Deliverance from the Dragon, Leviathan and Serpents Deliverance is a very difficult and complicated subject where a human being is concerned because of the flesh the human spirit lives in. The Bible declares that the flesh is one of the enemies that prevent man from enjoying a free and sound life. 1 John 2:16. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. After spending some time in the church, I became an evangelist and a Sunday school teacher, I started exercising self-deliverance which complicated the issues of my life the more because I did not fully understand how deep the powers I was dealing with were. Serpents intensified their attacks over me, but I knew one day the Lord would deliver me. Because of war in my country, I was forced to travel to Zimbabwe where I was a missionary working with a pair team of UN, youth with a mission, and I was the youth pastor for the Baptist Church. To cut a long story short, I was so much engaged in doing God's will and following in His footsteps that I was a very active evangelist to reach out lost souls. I was fasting three days every week and 10 to 14 days every two weeks. I was being used by the Lord so mightily to deliver others, heal others but myself I had serpents, hernia, and I was using eyeglasses because I almost developed myopia, a defective eye condition. I was calling upon the Lord to respond and bring healing to those areas of my life. One day, a servant of God came from America to Harare for a miracle crusade and I attended it. When he preached on the power of the blood of Jesus Christ, he called everyone who had eyeglasses to drop them on the floor and crash them. Everyone, over a million people of those who used eyeglasses did what was instructed but I took mine and put them into my pocket, thinking that just in case I get worse. Look at my lack of faith. But God was faithful to me and healed me completely from this condition. I had found my wife in the Lord before going to Zimbabwe. I married her when I returned back from Zimbabwe. She had discovered a ministry called Olangi Washu Warfare Ministry where she started praying and going through her deliverance. This is a powerful God-given ministry dealing with deliverance and warfare. To resume the big details, I came back and started following God in that ministry to seek my deliverance, because things were not getting any better. My main objective in that ministry was to get married, but the servants of God or deliverance ministers who received me, got a revelation from God concerning me. They had seen me arriving from abroad in a coffin as a dead person. They therefore agreed to seriously help me. I was put under an intensive program of teachings and fasting. It was in this close-up where I started receiving several revelations from the Lord about the nature of person I was. I learned a lot and went through serious training for about seven years. While there, I was delivered from so many things and it was there the Lord revealed to me how I was born and when I told my mother, she confirmed the details. That's how my mother also seriously came to give her life to Christ because it was impossible for a child to know such deep details unless it was either by revelation or being told by somebody who knew the secrets. But at this stage my father had long passed away. Here I had so many other revelations and visions which I will tell another time if Christ tarries to lift up his bride on the rapture, the day we are all waiting impatiently for. A month before the personal fight with Lucifer, I was in a night vision where I was summoned immediately to the first hierarchical level of satanic kingdom to meet the council of Lucifer commanded by an arch demon, seemed like a fallen angel with the powers of Lucifer himself. When I reached the place, it was like an open stadium of military parade where the most prominent people sat on one side and the people were seated on the other side of the parade stadium, 
like it happens in China or North Korea when there is a military parade. At the stand were seated the top military commanders, there were also seated ministers of each country of the earth, generals and colonels. I recognized some people who are top military commanders on earth seated on the stage near the arch demon. This was finally the council of principalities, powers and rulers. I was stunned that I was at such a place which I only read about in the Bible, Ephesians 6 10-13. Here the Lord clearly showed me how the council of darkness is organized. As I was standing down the stage, to my surprise I found a group of people who were also summoned to be sentenced for disobedience of orders of ancestral covenants with the grand master of evil, Satan. This arch demon, called one of the persons in the group where I was standing. He started by saying, I called this meeting because there has been a violation of orders and covenants within our hidden personnel, referring to me. He went on to say that he was going to order everyone upon his voice command to bow before him and worship him as a sign of everyone's loyalty to the master of illumination, Lucifer. He also said that if anyone does not obey the orders to bow before me, I will personally destroy him as I am going to do to this one right now as a demonstration. From his seat, he intently looked at this person who was taken out of the group I was standing with to make an experiment of destruction out of him. When he looked unto him, fire, brimstorm and liquid red fire came out of his mouth and completely disintegrated the body of that person in the presence of everyone. Immediately after this, everyone on the stage and on the floor bowed down before this arch demon except me. I stayed staying though I was trembling of fear that this arch demon would destroy me next for disobeying orders. This scenario seemed very similar to the Sadra, Meshach and Abednego in the Bible. When the arch demon saw that I had not bowed unto him, he was very furious and mad at me and said to everyone, this person does not seem to have learned the lesson. He is defying my powers. Before I destroy you, I order you to bow immediately. As he was speaking, one of his military personnel came to me and said he is talking to you, I advise you to bow immediately. I said to him, I will not bow to anyone but to Christ Jesus alone. This made him very furious and he said, now I'm going to destroy you. I couldn't imagine that my fight was long and this was the preliminary encounter with the higher powers of darkness before I would face Lucifer. The arch demon came down of the stage to face me. He was about five meters before me and evil power was flowing out of him and he was very dreadful. When he made the first step towards me, I remembered a technique that Rebecca Brown had used against some Satanists in her book, Prepare for War. In the vision, my mind went immediately to Ephesians 6:10, the whole armor of God. I immediately said to the arch demon, look, I have this shield. I just did it by faith because to myself I was not seeing anything with me on my left hand, but to my amazement, the arch demon stopped and looked at me and said, do you really think that that little thing with light will defend you? When he said that, I then realized that indeed the shield of faith I was using was real as the Bible says it. Then I advanced one step towards the arch demon, and he made one step backwards. Now. I knew he was afraid of me, so I quickly made another step and another and another. And when he wanted to escape, fire and huge light came out of the shield of faith which seriously destroyed, disintegrated, the arch demon into pieces. When the principalities and powers saw what had happened to their grand master and leader, they started transforming themselves into different kind of animals. Some transformed themselves into lion, leopard and birds to run back to their natural status on earth. When I saw that, I knew that the victory was mine in the might name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I was relieved that I started now to go and find my way to the earth. On that confusion, some two soldiers of the evil realm had lost their ability to return back on earth and they seemed lost and did not know how to return on earth. I was going and an angel appeared in my front and showed me the way to the earth. This was literally a bridge with a huge river that divides the earth with the first heavens. The angel put a bridge for me to cross and when I was crossing, the two soldiers tried to follow me begging for me to help them reach the earth because they had lost their witchcraft abilities to return back to the earth. At that point, my phone rang in the vision. When I picked it up, it was my wife and she asked me, how was the fight? I started explaining how it was. When I crossed the river, the bridge disappeared and the angel also disappeared and I was back on the earth. When I came to myself, I told my wife what was happening. We engaged ourselves to serious fasting and prayer, because we knew that our lives were at stake. 
Until this stage, I and my wife knew that we were having a strange experience. We were preparing in prayer and fasting for eventual incident. A week after, I was taken to face Lucifer. See here after the account of an encounter I had with Satan, the old serpent also called Lucifer, the deceiver, to continue in next chapter my encounter with Lucifer himself and how the Lord defeated him. God be with you all that have Jesus Christ as personal Lord and Savior, Amen. This confession is the fourth part in of the five volumes, from the excerpt testimony of Brother Augusto Quila Makwengo, a former servant and dedicated son of the Lucifer. To fully benefit from it, you need to read the remaining other fifth parts in numerical order. My encounter with Lucifer himself and how the Lord defeated him. It was a Friday, I was coming from work at 6 p.m. throughout the day, and I had been thinking and reflecting on the Lord. The previous day, I had a serious revelation that gave me the impression that something mysterious was going to happen to me. So, when I arrived home by 6.30 p.m., I told my wife that I wanted to lay down and listen to the news from the living room under the mosquito net. It was the first time I had had an out-of-the-body experience. Just as I started listening to the news, an angel appeared in the room and in that vision he told me to stand up and that we needed to go. The angel in charge of me came to my room at 7 p.m. while I was lying down and listening to the news after a hectic day at work. The angel asked me to rise up and let us go. I was under the mosquito net as there were many mosquitoes in that time in Angola. He picked me up from the bed and took me to the church hall where he started giving me instructions and training me on how I would meet a figure in the spirit world without yet mentioning the name. As mentioned before, my family had made a covenant with the dragon and Leviathan, the devil himself, and sold our lives to him, even as many slaves to America and Europe. So for the Lord to break that huge covenant, I needed to face Lucifer himself in the second heavens. I got up into my amazement, I could not touch my body, I tried talking to my wife but it seemed unfruitful. I tried to motion and wave my hand to her, but it seemed difficult. I and the angel went a long distance up to the church hall and at that moment I did not have any clothes on me but the angel guaranteed that I would wear my proper clothes once we were in the church premises. I thought we would not find anybody in the church but to my surprise there were many people singing and worshipping God. What was amazing was that there was fire over their heads, they were under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. There were also intercessors praying for the general overseer of the church. The angel took me immediately inside a church room and dressed me up and put me in the center of the church while everybody was looking at me. And from the expression on their faces, I had the feeling that I had a difficult mission ahead of me to accomplish. The angel told me who I was going to meet and how he was. He then trained me, teaching me how I should behave when I meet this personality and what I should do. After the training, the angel held my left hand and we went right up to the second heavens where we landed on a temple that was so weird, it was clean but had a pentagram and a circle around the pentagram star. The temple had four white stones on each corner and when I saw that I knew within me that I was going to meet somebody weird and evil. The temple was full of evil and there were giant demons chained as guards around the temple pillars. The angel went and sat on a tree outside the temple in the second heavens and started looking at me with his legs and hands crossed like somebody seating down comfortably. I started looking around to see the person that the angel who had described to me at the church premises. While I was turning around this evil temple the angel seated at the tree signaled to me to look behind and when I did, lo and behold, a young, beautiful, charming, attractive personality full of seduction was behind me. Brethren, Lucifer is not who we think he is. He was so attractive that the apples of his eyes were pulling me towards him as if I was going to enter inside him. His power was so big that I could barely stand on my feet. When I faced him, I looked into his eyes as the angel had instructed me, his eyes looked crystal clear around but too evil black at the center, and I felt as if it was pulling me from the floor to swallow me up. His eyes depicted evil and I felt I was in danger of dying. I had to stand firmly grounded to the floor to avoid being extracted by these evil eyes from the floor into that evil world which the center of his black evil eyes depicted. The angel at the training had told me to always keep my eyes fixed on him and to never allow my eyes to deviate whilst looking at him and that I had to look into his eyes and not fear. So I started looking into his very eyes while both of us were moving around the temple with each one's eyes concentrated on the other. I did not know then why this scenario of eye-to-eye -eye search was taking place and what it meant. 
the angel sitting in the tree spoke to my mind as if he had read my mind and knew what I was thinking, saying, because it is written, the eye is the lamp of the body. If your eyes are good, your whole body will be full of light, but if thine eye is evil, your whole body shall be full of darkness and how great is that darkness. Matthew 6 22-23, and this is why the devil is looking into your eyes to find a fault in you. Immediately I heard that in my spirit, I got a holy anger and started concentrating on looking very intently into the devil's eye and within me confessing Christ. Then the devil started misquoting the word of God by twisting some verses, and I started contradicting him saying, no, it is not written like that and he would say, it is written, I would say, no it is not written like that, all this while, I was not mentioning at the end of my declarations, the name of Jesus Christ, when at the last misquote of the devil I angrily said, no, it is not written like that in the name of Jesus Christ. Immediately, the whole temple ground trembled as in an earthquake and the giants fell down and the devil was thrown down on what looked like concrete floor. He started shaking there where he changed into an evil beast and with a shout and smoke disappeared. As I write the account of what transpired that day, it is as vivid now in my mind as if it happened only yesterday. After that I stayed there alone, looking for him to reappear any time. While I was looking, he reappeared in a smoke-like appearance of evil and full of wickedness this time. All his powers were loaded upon him and evil was radiating from his head and he had different kinds of wickedness. I said to myself that this time he would tear me apart and swallow me seriously. But to my amazement, I felt peace and calm come upon me I was able to concentrate and I started fighting him fist to fist. I would strike him on the head and he would strike me back without success. While I was in this state, I physically woke up to urinate, but even at that level, I tried touching my wife to speak to her, but was unable to. Each time I would visit the gents and almost immediately, I would return to the second heavens with the speed of light. This happened about three times. I hardly noticed the transition between getting up to pass water and the moment of fight in the second heavens. I immediately looked at the angel who was seated comfortably on the tree, thinking that he would come and help me but he remained where he was seated. I thought to myself, why is this angel not coming to help me out? And he read my mind again and replied, this battle must be fought by you alone. Then I and Lucifer continued fighting and fighting when the angel signaled to me that there was a stick like a baseball bat on the floor, then I picked it up and struck the devil on his forehead and it got swollen, he developed a very long bump with blood at the end of it which was not dripping or falling. Then at that very moment when he fell down, the giants around the temple were released from their chains to come and help the devil fight me. I started fighting all of them at once. They started launching themselves onto me like a swarm of evil bees covering me. Then I seriously beat them up in the name of Jesus and defeated them all. At this time, they all transformed themselves into evil beings and vanished. When this fight ended, the angel came down from the tree and held me up and said, we will now go backwards facing this temple as we came and right back into the church again. When we reached the church floor on earth, I and the angel looked together up at that second heavens, the heavens was open and Lucifer appeared in the clouds to tell me, I will destroy you, and the angel told me, tell him that if he did not defeat you in the fight, he will never defeat you again. So I told him that and he vanished and the heavens closed. Then immediately the angel took me back to the house to meet my body lying on the bed. When I came to myself, I started telling the incident to my wife, as my left hand was a bit paralyzed. I called my godfather for prayer and my hand came back to normal. After this incident, my life became miserable and I was attacked from all sides. Immediately the next day after the fight, the devil sent an evil angel to meet my family in the daytime and they had an emergency meeting where they were deciding my fate at the family level. While the family was meeting against me, my brother got out of the meeting and told me that he did not want to be part of the family plot against me and told me everything they were planning. Every time I would go to work, I could sense and even see some evil people walking with me and inside the tax I would take. I was so aware of their evil presence with my physical senses. I had a 3000 banana plantation but it dried up mysteriously. I had money in my bank account, incredibly, that money was also confiscated by the police. I had bought a combi car which was mysteriously destroyed on the way from South Africa. In a bid to have something to do while without a job, I bought a bus for business, but that too got lost mysteriously and I cannot explain how. One day, 
I was driving with my wife and children in a borrowed car of a brother in Christ, and the car started running at top speed, guided by a demon. We were heading for an accident until the Lord miraculously saved us. When people came around us they discovered that we were all safe with everyone unharmed. My life became a disaster like job in the Bible, though I did not lose anyone to death. After all these trials, a family member was sent with the mission to come and bewitch my children and kill one. When this sister arrived my house and got hold of my son, Ezekiel, the boy immediately started convulsing and dying. His eyes popped out and he started foaming profusely at the mouth. I did every kind of prayer and applied every kind of warfare technique using Bible verses, but it seemed unfruitful, because the boy was dying. I was finally inspired to run to my godmother's house that is about 20 or 30 kilometers from where I lived. When I arrived, my godmother took the boy and lay over him inside the room in Elijah-like prayer over the Sunamite woman's son and my boy got up miraculously. In addition to that, my children started being attacked with sickness and diseases. To my utter amazement and disbelief my family came physically to beat me and my wife up, because we had destroyed the family covenant and altars. After this incident, we made the family members understand that Christ alone should be worshipped and adored. No family altars should be revered. We forgave them and restored them to Christ. I started receiving lots of demonic visitations in the bedroom and living room that it got to a point I fought with my physical hands and defeated them in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. It would always happen that after several fights my body would get paralyzed on the right side and I would call my spiritual father, mentor, who always prayed with me and Jesus Christ would make me whole again. I remember one day, I was watching TBN and a servant of God was preaching with such a powerful anointing about victory over demons, when all of a sudden, six giant demons appeared in my living room and I started fighting with them literally. When my wife heard me, she came to join in the fight without seeing these giants in the room, but I was them clearly and could even feel their grip over me. What she did was help by praying against them. It was such a moment of torment and fight which I thought would never end. I lost the job I had mysteriously and I was baffled. I immediately entered into a 21-day fasting program that the ministry had planned for disciples. During the fasting God did many things and wonders. I lost almost everything I had. I had fought so many pythons who were appearing on my visions even when I was at the hospital bed sick. The nurse was sent by demons to inject the wrong medicines into the drip when immediately the Lord made me to wake up and I noticed that my body was allergic to the drugs being administered and I was beginning to swell in the arm. So I called out the doctor who noticed that a wrong prescription which belonged to another patient had been administered to me. Right after this incident which was at about 11 am, I feel asleep and I saw a python come to the hospital bed, I took a sword which came from nowhere and sliced the head of the python and killed it. When I woke up, the roommate who was on a serious coma status got healed and started walking miraculously. Glory to the Lord Jesus Christ. After all the troubles, I went through. The Lord started restoring me. The Lord restored my spiritual being as a human being and poured His glory upon me. The Lord baptized me with His Holy Spirit and several gifts started manifesting through me until now. The Lord provided a job while in the fasting of 21 days, healed me and my children. Brethren, our God is awesome and very powerfully. He exists for us and He is a really Father who defends His children fiercely. I speak only by His grace and power. Brethren, this experience has gotten me very aware of the powers of wickedness and the kingdom of darkness, but most assuredly about the mighty and awesome deliverance of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is the first time I am writing this experience of mine to be distributed to everyone, to build up your faith in the Lord and to assure you of the victory we have in Christ Jesus our Lord and Master. I normally talk about it in bits and pieces, but has never written it down in its entirety for anyone to read till now. Recently. Lucifer appeared in my bedroom to shout at me and ask me why am I sharing my testimony. Brethren, it is absolutely a divine instruction to share my testimony with everyone. The Lord knows that it will deliver many and encourage many to know that the devil is a defeated foe even with all his powers. To continue in last volume, The Coming of Our Lord Jesus Christ, Visions of the Rapture. Grace be with you all, Amen. Hello everyone thank you for watching our video for today, I trust it blesses your heart. Endeavor to like this video and share it to your loved ones, 
I pray the grace of the living God will continue to rest upon you and upon everything that pertains to you in the name of Jesus, Amen. If you have any question or comments kindly drop them in the comment section, God bless you. See you in our next video and have a lovely day, bye for now.